So you finally got your minigun, supergun, PCB, and your bill of materials parts in the mail. The next thing for us to do is to solder it all together. If you're wondering how I ordered the minigun, supergun, PCB, as well as the stuff on the bill of materials, go ahead and watch part one of this series. Let's jump over to the bench and I'll show you how to assemble your minigun, supergun. The first thing that I'm gonna do is file off the edges on our PCB before we start soldering anything. I've got this small flat file, maybe it's not ideal for this, but I think it works in this case. All you're trying to do is sand down the little nubs on the edge here so that this edge is flat. I probably should have mentioned that you might want to wear a mask while you do this. The next step is to start soldering on components onto our PCB here. There's an order of operations that we're going to follow. Basically, we're going to start with the smallest components and work to the larger ones. And I guess I mean thickness wise, not necessarily footprint, but by how tall it stands above the board. Usually the smallest components are surface mount resistors and capacitors. If you've never put your own PCB together before, you're gonna look for two pads right next to each other. That's an indicator of a surface mount capacitor or resistor. The other thing you can look for are these small indicators here. This one says C15. The C part means capacitor and 15 is sort of a reference designator, but there's also LEDs over here and R5 over here, which is a surface mount resistor. Now, if you pull out a particular bag, I ordered from DigiKey, so this is what a DigiKey label is going to look like. If you look at this customer reference section, if you order these things correctly, you should have put the reference from the bill of materials in that customer reference spot. I obviously did not. I just put minigun in every single slot. That's just going to make things a little bit harder. Now we have to cross-reference the description of the part here with the original bill of materials and look at the original reference designator on there. I'm going to go ahead and pull out all of the surface mount components from this bag. We have all our surface mount resistors and capacitors here. Here's what one of the resistors looks like. This is a 220 ohm resistor. It looks like these two resistors go to R6 and R8. I'm gonna show you the process of soldering one set of these resistors, and basically you can repeat the steps for all the other resistors and capacitors. Some things to keep in mind, resistors and capacitors are not polar, or at least these surface mount ones are not, so it doesn't matter which way they go around. All right, so first we wanna take them out of this little package here, and I use my X-Acto knife to do that. I would just be very careful if you can do this on a really big, open table so that you don't lose these parts like I almost did. The only tools I'm going to need are a soldering iron and a pair of tweezers for actually soldering these components. I also recommend some liquid flux here. I'll leave a link in the description to all these tools. All right, we're going to go ahead and tin one of the pads of this resistor. I would typically solder the one that is your dominant hand. So for example, I solder with my right hand. So I'm going to solder the right pad. All right, now I'm gonna take my tweezers in my non-dominant hand, and I'm going to place the resistor where you can see the value face up. Now the idea is we want the resistor as flat to the PCB as we can get it. I'm gonna heat up that solder pad that we already tinned and slowly move the resistor into it, like that. Then we can turn this around and just add solder to the other pad. That's my method for soldering these small surface mount components onto a PCB. We're just gonna go ahead and solder the remainder of the surface mount resistors and capacitors. My suggestion is don't worry about these ones on the back just yet. We'll get to those after we've done the ones on the front. And like I said, if you don't know where they're supposed to go because you didn't put the reference there, you can always look at the value and then cross-reference with the bill of materials. I've got another little tip for preventing something called tombstoning. Let's go ahead and solder this pad here. Tombstoning is when you're trying to solder one of these surface mount components and it accidentally kind of tips up on its side, kind of looking like a tombstone. How I like to prevent that is to make sure that the resistor or capacitor is as flat as possible on the PCB. If you want to also, you can solder one of the ends like normal. And then after you let go with your tweezers, go ahead and press down on top of the resistor with your tweezers and then heat that pad up again. This is gonna make sure that that resistor is as flat as possible on that joint. And then there's no real worry when you go to solder the other side the first side is going to hold it in place. I'm gonna go ahead and solder the rest of the resistors and capacitors on here, and then we'll come back and move on to the next step. At this point, we have all the surface mount resistors and capacitors on the top here. The next thing that we could do is solder this little LED. If you look at the board here, you can see that LEDs do have a polarity. And if you look very carefully at the LED, you'll notice that one side has little green markings on it. The side that has the green markings is the negative side. I actually made the mistake of soldering mine in backwards. So I'm here to show you the correct orientation on this other board here. Like the other surface mount parts, go ahead and solder the right pad. And with the green markings to the left, go ahead and solder the LED into the board. 
and then we could set the negative side. And there we go, now we have an LED. Now I think before we solder the components on the bottom side here, let's go ahead and solder the chips on the top. So this one here is an amp, and I'm not actually sure what this chip is here, but there are these two small chips that we can solder before we do the bottom of the board. First, let's tackle the 7374. If you look pretty closely, you can see that there's a circle in this corner. That's going to line up with the circle on the board. In the top left here, there's a circle. That is the orientation that this chip is gonna have to go. Let's try to solder this 7374. We should be able to get away with our normal soldering iron instead of something like a hot air rework station. But you wanna be very careful and line the chip up as best you can before you solder it down. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of solder to our iron add some liquid flux make sure it's lined up on both sides and then tack it down all right now we can rotate and tack the other side down now we can try to spread out some of this solder if you have to you can keep adding more flux You want to make sure that you're not bridging any of these pins either. Using that technique of starting in the center and sort of dragging outwards with your chisel tip, I made mine work like that. Just remember that you can add more flux too. Flux helps really a lot with working with these chips. What I thought was a chip up here is actually a switch, so we're gonna skip that for now. I finished off all the really flat components on the top side of the board here. Let's go ahead and flip it over and work on the ones on the bottom. That's everything on the bottom of the board. At this point, I'd like to clean the flux off of the board on both sides. If we don't clean the flux off in baby steps, this board is gonna be all sticky by the time we're finished. What I like to do is put some isopropyl alcohol on it, use a toothbrush to kind of do a quick little scrub, and then we're gonna use some toilet paper just to kind of clean up the alcohol from the surface. The alcohol basically spreads around the flux, but the toilet paper is actually gonna absorb it. All right, that's a little bit better. Let's do the back side. Now we're gonna move up in thickness for some of these parts. I have a bunch of the taller components. Let's go ahead and look through them and find the ones that are shorter. We're gonna start with these tactile buttons here. Those are gonna mount down here in the corner. Go ahead and pop them into the holes. They're longer one way than the other, so they're kinda of hard to mess up. Ooh, that's satisfying. I'm just gonna put both of them in. Okay, the real reason you wanna start with flat components is so that you can go ahead and flip the board over and use the pressure of the board holding the components down in your desk to hold the components down so that you can solder them. In this case, it doesn't matter. These slider buttons just kinda of hold themselves in by their legs. If this was another type of flat component, it would hold itself down. Go ahead and solder this in. Okay, those are all set. Before we get too much further, actually, I wanna work on this dip switch here. This is another surface mount component, but I think it's okay to do it now. This one should be a little bit easier to solder than the 7374. I'm gonna start by adding some solder to one of the corners. Now I'm gonna orient this so that the text on the board actually matches the orientation of the text on the chip. Go ahead and hold the package with our tweezers and heat up the pad and sneak it in. All right, then we tack the other side down and solder the rest of the pins. If you do end up bridging a pin, that's all right, you can use a little bit of solder braid. I think that's good enough. Next, I think we should do these pretty flat 33 microfarad capacitors. I don't think that these have a polarity either, so we could put them in either way. Gonna put them in as far down as they will go. And when we flip it over, we can spread these component legs apart. That will keep the capacitor in place. While we're here, we'll put the other one in. And now you can really see that technique of holding down these components as you're soldering them. And while we're here, we can use some side cutters to cut these legs off. Next, let's work on this low pass filter slider. The component itself doesn't really have an orientation, so it doesn't matter which way it goes in the board. Just put the switch in here, and then we're gonna flip it over. Let's solder one of the legs. 
and then I'm going to turn it over and put my finger on the top here and push down. And then when I heat up the bottom side, I can make sure that the component is flushed to the PCB. And then we can solder the other two legs. And then we can cut these ones short as well. Now we can work on these cool blue pots. They can only really go one way in the board since they only have three legs. And see now we're running into a problem because these potentiometers are actually smaller than these caps and the switch. So we should have done this first. What we'll have to do is hold on to the potentiometer with our fingers and then get some solder on our iron and then temporarily tack down one of the pins. Then we can come back and solder a different pin. And then we can touch up that first one again. And then we can repeat for all three of these potentiometers. And we'll cut these legs short as well. Next we can do this cool audio jack. Just kind of goes in place here and solder it in place. Next we can do this audio header, it goes down here by the audio jack. Just want to make sure that it's flat against the board. Okay, now we can do this JST connector, it goes up here. I think this is for extra controller buttons, controller harness. How about this Molex connector? It goes over here. This is definitely a connector that you're going to want to make sure that is flat because it's pretty big. Next we can do the mini DIN. This is the NES RGB style mini DIN. Goes in this spot here. Next, I think we should deal with a kind of annoying part, which is this voltmeter here. Before we deal with the actual voltmeter itself, I'm going to grab a couple of things. I'm going to grab these threaded standoff pieces. I'm going to grab a bunch of these clear washers. And I'm going to grab a bunch of our M2 screws. Okay, the idea is I'm going to pre-install these standoffs. What I want to do is I want to take a washer, put it on the screw, put the screw through the board from the back, put another washer on top of it. I don't really know if that's providing that much insulation. I don't know if these really need to be insulated at all, but they're more so to space out these pieces. Now we're gonna take our standoff and screw it onto the screw, tighten it from the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other screw. If you wanna tighten the screws with some pliers or something, that's probably fine. The voltmeter is going to screw onto the top of that like this. Although before we do that, we want to solder this wire. There's a positive wire and a negative wire, the red and the black, and they're gonna get soldered to this H2 section here where it says voltmeter. Let's fold the wires over like this and leave ourselves a little bit of slack, but kind of come back on itself. That should give us enough wire slack to make it back underneath the voltmeter. When you have enough slack, go ahead and cut these wires off and let's strip and tin them. Okay, now let's stick the wires to the holes. And then we'll solder them from the bottom. All right, now we can do the same thing. Put a washer on the screw, and then we're gonna screw the screw in the top of the standoff. One of the issues that I'm having is that the washers that come with the bill of materials are not thick enough for both of the screws to fit into this standoff. So I'm gonna swap them out for some thicker washers and we'll see how that does. I found these M2 nylon washers I had lying around and these were a lot thicker than the clear ones that came with the bill of materials. I ended up putting two at the bottom here with none on the back of the board and then to actually attach the voltmeter to the top of the standoff I have one on either side. That seems to be working for now. If we have to come back later and tweak it we can. Let's work on the DB15 controller ports from the front here. These are nice because they just kind of snap into the holes. We don't really have to worry about holding them.
That's it for the controller ports. While we're here, I don't really want to lose this little jumper thing, so I'm going to put it here on the audio selector. There's either MVS or mono, so I'm going to put this over MVS for now so that I don't lose it. The only thing left is two more sets of capacitors. Should be pretty easy by now for you to look up the bill of materials and find out where these go. Just to note that these capacitors have a polarity, you'll have to check out the markings on here. I believe this gray here means negative. So you'll have to make sure that the gray side goes to the gray on the silk screen here, like that. Then we can use the side cutters to cut the legs off. The last thing we need to solder is this giant JAMA connector. It's going to get soldered to the row of pads on the top and the bottom of the board here, something like this. But the little problem is that the JAMA connector legs are a little bit wider than the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to fold these legs inwards a little bit so that they clamp onto the board here. I think it's pretty easy to use some pliers just to kind of squeeze those legs together. Now we can very carefully sneak the connector back onto the board. We just need to do our best to try to keep this JAMA connector flat or as perpendicular as we can to the board. And then we just need to solder all these pins. Let's make sure that the JAMA connector pins here are lined up with the pads. I'm just gonna solder one of these first so that way we can line this up. I'm just trying to make sure that the connector here is lined up with the board. Then I'm gonna do the other end as well. And then you can move on to soldering the rest. Okay, that's one side done. With all the soldering done, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the bottom here. Might have to do this a few times. You can clean the top part here if you want to. I think that's probably gonna to be too annoying for me to clean off, so I'm just gonna leave it. I think that's where I'm gonna leave this video. I know you all are patiently waiting to be able to use this thing, but there's still too much left to do. We have to put on the 3D printed case, and we have to put together our power supply that's going to power the minigun super gun. If this video helped you assemble your minigun super gun, give this video a like, and get subscribed so you don't miss part three of this series, and more of my retro console modding tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.